This center dish probably weighs 30 pounds. Boy, it's a heavy guy. We're gonna switch that out and this should cure our problem. Comes with a nice new pressed on bearing here. Hoo hoo hoo, fancy stuff. The center diff has some wear parts in it then when it gets hot apparently is when the clicking gets really bad. Right now it's cold in Colorado. The clicking has subsided significantly. However, during the summer, <whistles> buddy, it was loud and obnoxious. I have replaced both axles since the clicking started. It was a temporary fix for a permanent problem. Unfortunately, this thing went out probably around 90,000 miles. It's got 160 on it now. Yeah, I've been delaying the inevitable. Kyle's told me you're gonna need to replace this part. I didn't wanna believe it, but here we are. The center diff will run you about 500 bucks. Don't buy remanufactured parts unless you know for sure the guy who's doing the remanufacturing knows what he's doing. I buy Subaru parts for a reason. They're more expensive, but they work way, way better. Got my exhaust pretty much out of the way. The three bolts up front right there and that one hanger in the middle. There's an exhaust hanger here and an exhaust hanger here that you have to pull out to drop this whole thing down. And then it just kind of falls out. Next thing I'm gonna do is work on those heat shields up underneath there. This is the heat shield we're gonna work on. Got a bolt there, there, pull down there, take those guys out. That'll give us access to this drive shaft because the drive shaft's got a couple of bolts here in this carrier. And then we're gonna remove the rear. These are just nuts on the back here. Pop this guy out, whole drive shaft should slide out of the back of the transmission up there. Show you more when I get this heat shield out of the way. I know you folks were wondering, these guys, 12. You guys have probably seen me do this before. And even in this video here, I'm a big fan of bolt accountability. I like to put them right back where I got them from, especially if I'm not gonna complete the job in one day. That way, I know where to look for them. And since I'm sitting right here and I haven't moved down to the drive shaft, we'll need to take that out. Guess what size those are? 14. I'll probably go loosen the drive shaft bolts down there first. Let's play a game. You guys guess what size those are. Go ahead, let me know when you're ready. Well, for all of those of you who said 12, you'd be right. All right, two things. One, you're gonna want this to be in neutral so you can turn this to get all these bolts out. However, when you're pulling them out, you want it either the parking brake engaged or you want it in gear so that it doesn't turn. See, it's locked right now. That's what we want. I'm not gonna have to worry about this thing flip-flopping and doing all kinds of weird stuff on me while I'm trying to pull it out. Thing number two, these things are keyed. They have a flat side on them and that flat side rides right against the yoke here. When you put them back in, make sure your flat side is flush against that. That way you can turn it without needing any sort of wrench on the other side. Now that we got those guys out there, pull these guys out and this whole thing will drop right out. Same problem with the exhaust. Be careful here if you are but one man for this shall fall onto your body or your little fingies. Make sure you drain your transmission here with uh, this guy. These two fellas, they're gonna, they're gonna drip too. So get yourself a nice big drain pan. Torx bit, 70, sweet. Before we take this drive shaft out, we're gonna give a nice fat mark in between. And all we gotta do is line this up. This guy's balanced as you can see by the weight here. All we gotta do is line these guys up and we can put it back in and it should run smoothly. The starter's positioned up, up here and there's one bolt that's also a bell housing bolt that's right there. Should be a 14, so we'll just confirm on this guy. Yep, yep. Yeah, good old 14. It'll be the same up there. This is the next step we always take when we're taking something apart. Don't know if these bolts are all gonna be the same size. So I went ahead and just took a proactive approach here and labeled the guy and put it in a bag. This is a good backup technique that goes along well with putting stuff back where it came from while you're waiting to put things back together. Next step is to get this top starter bolt out. Already got our 14 on there. This air box might get in the way, but if it doesn't, you can just squeeze in there. We're probably still gonna have to take it off. This little port cover here, gives us access to the hose clamp so that we can slide this thing back and out of the way and have more access to those bell housing bolts. I'm gonna take this other line off. Already got this one disconnected. There's one more hose right there that you just gotta pull the clamp off to get this thing out of the way. And then we'll pull the whole unit up and out of the way and now we have full access. Bungie corded the starter up out of the way so that it's not hanging on its wire down there. Hopefully it'll be out of the way enough to get the bell housing out. If not, we'll just move it around as we need to. This is the slave cylinder that we have to take off. This pushes on the fork and then actuates the clutch. This gives you a little bit of hydraulic pressure to make it a little bit easier. We're gonna pop it off because it's attached here. And rather than having to re-bleed the whole system, we'll just take the whole unit off because the only other option would be to do a bleed. As usual, put the bolts back in where they came from so we know where to find them. Next is we're gonna pull these electrical clips out and get this bracket probably out of the way and that'll give us access to these bell housing bolts that are underneath. Plus we need these wires free. This clip that holds your wires in there 
Just took a pair of needle nose pliers, squeeze the ears, and just slide it out. And that way I can just tuck it out under the out of the way over here, and it won't be in any sort of way when we're trying to pull stuff out. There's a bolt here that holds the engine mount in. It also mounts the transmission. Kyle's pulling it out right now. What size is it, Kyle? 17. 17. And there's that bolt that I was just telling you about. It goes back this way, and the other one goes back this way. There's a lower engine mount bolt in the same place. The one on the passenger side is easier to get from the top. The one on the driver's side is going to be easier to get from the bottom. Kyle's pulling that out now. Also, what size is it, Kyle? 17. Everything's a 17, 17 or a 14. Or a 12. Thing. Or a 12. This is why Subaru is better than Ford. Anything's better than Ford. But Ford, you have to have a 10 through 19 plus probably like a 1 through 9 to fit the 10 through 19. And then you have to have standard sizes. And then you need an adjustable wrench for those ones that aren't any of those sizes. And then you need a fucking hammer. And then I got to bleep the f And then on top of that, you need a trailer and a winch to tow the thing to the junkyard when we're done trying to fix it because it's a piece of sh And Kyle ran over. This bolt right here looks like it's just super long running from here all the way back into the bell housing. There's not enough clearance to get it out more than a couple of inches, but we're thinking you can pull it out, get a couple of inches of space, and then still slide the bell housing out. So we're just preemptively pulling it out while we have the car down so when we get it up, we don't have to bring it down again and bring it up and down and up and down and up, up and, up and, and down. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's, here's what we found is that the there's only one engine mount holding this whole kit and caboodle together, and it's way down there. When we pull the transmission out, the engine's gonna flop this way. Luckily, Subaru put in hooks so you can pull the motor, and we just grabbed some ratchet straps, hooked it to the frame up front, and just put just a little tension on it so the motor doesn't flop over when we pull the transmission out. There's that third engine mount bolt that we didn't take out from the top. Look at how easy it is to get from down here. And then boom, 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 boom and we should be pretty close to done. We're looking at these cables, these guys, what you need to do to unhook that. This is the base plate for the shifter. We took the plate off here. This is your reverse lockout, and it's just a easy screwdriver. Came right off, no problem. And then your shifter, there's a spring clip that doesn't require a whole lot of tension to just slide right off, no big deal. And then these are just like your regular uh, brake hanger clips. We'll just put a little pressure on here with a screwdriver and pop those off and they should just slide right out and they'll all go with the transmission. And then we just slide them back in when we're done. Just be mindful. There's a tiny little spring right there and I don't know if that thing's gonna pop out easily. So just heads up on it. Oop, yep. launched it. Got it. Hit my knee real good. I'm gonna close my eyes now. I am too. I'm using the, what are those called? The, the squint, the squint, <laughs> squinty glasses? Squinty glasses. Taking the transmission mount bolts out. Got ourselves set up with a transmission jack for safety. There's two on this side, two on the driver's side, and then uh, oh, one here and then one on the driver's side in the same spot over there. Not too bad, just six bolts and the whole thing should come out. Had to install a cross brace to hold the motor up so the transmission would have some clearance to get out. These things, $65 at the freight. We're, we don't have any affiliation with the freight, but we do buy their tools. And uh, yeah, there you go. Make sure you support your motor. In order to have room, went ahead and removed the brace. After taking the bolts out and all that to get it loose, we just popped it right off. It's only two bolts holding it to the transmission mount. No big deal. Also, it makes it easier to put on your transmission jack. Boom, boom. Is the, looks like the starter's in the way. It's not, it's, it's these, uh, so the alignment. The alignment pins. On that side is almost out. This side is not. Have we tried to put a pry bar down underneath at the bottom? Yes. Yeah. Now you can see the flywheel. Used a ratchet strap here, because when we set up our engine support beam, we were getting the driver's side of the engine was just kind of sitting down a little bit. So we hooked up to this loop here and just over to the frame, ran a board across so that there's no pressure on any major components down in there. Probably a little sketchy, but you know what? It worked. All right, and out the transmission comes after a bit of wiggling and shaking, a little jiggling, and I feel like Elvis got in here on this transmission to get it out. <laughs> so Dale just put the transmission on his lap. Yeah, it didn't wanna clear the rear diff. Mm -hmm. So I just had to, uh, Only. I got it. Only did minor bending to our tool cart here. Not too bad, but <laughs> there we go. Okay, see, it's not that heavy. Clearly it's not that heavy. Dale's just that strong. And Dale's just that strong, all right. There was a grounding strap hooked up right here that we didn't notice when we pulled the transmission, so of course it just snapped. We're going to have to replace the terminal on this end, and then we'll leave the grounding strap 
hooked up and then we'll plug it back into the firewall later when we reinstall. Just make sure you guys get this one single, the only wire that's connected to this transmission outside of these two plugs that we talked about earlier. This is the rear differential housing here. Got a handful of bolts. I don't know, Dale, what do you think? You think they're gonna 14. be a uh, 14? It's a 14. We'll take all those bolts off. I don't know if we're gonna have to take these two off yet or not. This is just a bracket. We'll start with those other ones and then we're gonna go from there. We're gonna use a slide hammer to take this thing apart. Got at least a couple of dowels that help locate it when you put it back in. We went ahead and removed that bracket for a couple of reasons. One, it was just kind of in the way of everything. And two, because this is where we're hooking the slide hammer up. The one thing we're not sure about is whether we're gonna have to remove the shifter bracket or not. We might be able to get around it. We're gonna try first. And if we don't get around it, then we will pull it off. I have a feeling that the shaft goes in too deep and we're gonna have to pull it off, but we're gonna give it a shot. Also, we took a dead blow and just started separating the case just a little bit. That way we had just a little bit more freedom. Hopefully the slide hammer will just pop it right off real easy. It's not on there super tight. It's basically just secured with RTV. Took about 10 pulls maybe on the slide hammer, wouldn't you say, Dale? Yep. About 10 pulls. It wasn't bad. Came right off. No big deal. And we're going to go slow here so that we don't lose any parts as we pull it out. There should just be the one shaft going in. There's our center differential right there that we're going to replace. There's a little inspection cover right here. And there's just enough of a gap. If you're careful, you can squeeze in there, hook onto one of these little holes, and just kind of wiggle the uh, center diff out. This cover was leaking anyways, so we needed to pull it off and reseal it so that it wouldn't leak anymore. It's got a small sensor in it, 19 millimeter wrench, took it off real easy. It was not challenging at all. There's just a clip right here that holds it down and they just it just kind of bends out of the way. It's super easy to move. Now we get the center diff out. This upper shaft comes out the same time as the center diff, so we'll have to go back in together. This bearing right here sits right inside of that, and it just kind of is held in by pressure from the cover and the shaft just being in there, and that's really it. Through RTV around our seal here, and your seal here, but get everything buttoned back up. There's that grounding wire I was talking about earlier. Reattached it. We'll actually reattach this end of the firewall when it goes back in. Everything else is all buttoned up. Put the bracket back on the bottom down here. All these bolts are nice and tight. And then all these bolts here on the side are also nice and tight. And our, we put our sensor back in. Everything's good. This transmission's ready to go back in. Now, time to do the clutch. Dale went ahead and muscled that guy on there. Still using our sketchy system here. We're almost lined up. It's a little higher on one side, but we can, we can make it work. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the back. You just get a oh yeah that's looking pretty good we'll muscle it onto the locator dowels got the starter back in there all the bell housing bolts are tight we confirmed them twice got both engine mounts all lined up and in we went ahead and connected the electrical connectors right up there and then fed these lines back super easy they just popped on and then the little clips to hold them in place uh let's see cover there maybe throw a trans mount on this some Drive shaft, exhaust, maybe? Ah, uh, yeah, okay. I am really proud of the boys coming in here and helping me out, getting some more of this project done today since uh, it took a little bit longer than expected. And it was kind of a two-man job at one point, but my God, look at the mess they left. They did say that I owe them a clean shop and some tasty sodas. Holy mother, I'm not even gonna be able to get this car out of here. I finish it here in a little bit. There are only a couple of things left to do to finish this job up. Put in the heat shield, double check and make sure the boys didn't miss anything and then button it up. Transmission's all set. Don't forget to check the brake fluid level in your slave and master cylinder here. Really, it's just a slave cylinder. The cylinder for the, for the hydraulic pressure for the clutch. Mine is low. I will top it off. All right, moment of truth. Quick test of the clutch, seems fine. All right, shifts through all, through all the gears fine. No funny lights. Now I just gotta road test it. <sighs> Ugh, just sniffling it out before I start my next section. Whew, all right, here we go. <sighs> gotta get these sniffles out. All right, whew. <sighs> Hold on. <sighs> Everybody good? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Good? Yep. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right.
me start over again. <clears throat> Whew, start over again.